<laughs> Jim Brewer, the actor comedian, performing at the Knitting Factory in Brooklyn, uh, July 25th and Monday, August 1st at yeah. 8 Eastern. He's got a new album, Jim Brewer and the Loud and Rowdy yes. songs from the garage available yeah. now. Yeah. It's always good to see you. You too. So I thought we were going to play music and it was going to be you and Brian Johnson. When you guys were on Howard Stern and you you were uh, doing a duet, weren't you? Uh, well, we weren't good at when I was on Howard. He was just he was playing the song, but there was no intention of getting Brian to come up there. He's you know he's like sixty eight and legend singer. I don't think hey, Brian, you want he doesn't need to. Yeah, he doesn't need to. Hey, uh, Brian, you want to go on Howard? And but do you we'll sing at seven a.m. with my little song? I know you're on ACDC, but you know <laughs> this is a big opportunity for uh, to get some extra tweeters. Exposure. Yeah. yeah, you know, Jim but Brewer. Could you up. could you tour with ACDC? Oh God, no! You couldn't do the songs. No, I could do three minutes of one song. I can <laughs> I can get this worse. You ready? Thunderstruck. <laughs> But after two minutes, my my vocal cords like a machete was taken to it. How did how did he do that for all those years? I think he went in the studio, and I think because Back in Black was the first album he did, and uh, I think he went in, and you know maybe the producers like, uh, all right, um, hey, this fit song is Back in Black, so let's you know see what you got there, Brian. And he went Back in Black. I hit. Mm, hold on, um. Why don't we try just screaming it? Just scream. Back in black! We've got a hit! We've got a hit! Sing everything like that! Sing me on! Love it. Let, uh, Love yeah, it. Two a days. Play a little bit more of uh, Jim with uh, Brian. This is a hot song. Take your time. <laughs> it's, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big build up to it. It's a big build up. Yeah. It's gonna hit the post here. What's he can? I come in second. <laughs> he comes in first. This is him. Okay. Alright. This is me. Dude, you can't tell the difference. Yeah, but you see, Dan, when you listen to these lyrics, I can relate to you and your pants. Yeah, what do you think? These, That song is the pants you're wearing. We're just taking chances. Yeah. We're taking chances. I, I don't care anymore. I don't care either. I'm... I'm 20 years, I want to be on a beach in Miami with a with a metal detector, <laughs> with black socks pulled up to my knees, like and, and my kids going, Dad, what are you doing? And I'm going to say nothing. Okay, right be, during the commercial break, yeah. you said something about the deflator and deflate gate in Mexico and yeah, crazy yeah, 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 story, yeah. And, yeah. and I go, okay, wait. Let's talk about it. You go, no, no, let's don't. And then you go, okay, I will. All right, but before so, I even do that. Okay. I was listening to you guys before with the, the, polit okay. the, the politics and ball players and all that. Okay. It, here's what I've learned over fans. You can get away. With, it doesn't matter what a guy can come out and say, I'm into communism. I'm into dict It doesn't matter what they say as long as they prefer. Like, all right, I'm a Mets fan. Diehard Mets fan. When they got Jose Reyes back, uh, uh, even before that, Bartola Colon yeah. had this big thing where, like, oh, he's got another wife and kids. And I went from big sexy, I saw him hit a home run, and my first, my wife said, you know what? I don't like him anymore. I went, <laughs> now hold on. That's that's the culture. You don't, you know what kind of, you don't know what's going on. I immediately defended him. And that's what a fan does. It doesn't matter what Jose Reyes comes back and you know he he he, he abused see, someone's wife was really bad. The first thing I did, which is horrible, I went, you know, you don't know the situation. He's in yeah. Colorado. He's frustrated. She's nagging. Why are we in Colorado? We should have never left New York. You can't hit anymore. They were drinking. You you don't know. But the fact that I defended, so as far as a athlete saying 
I'm Republican, I'm for this guy. It doesn't matter. When he hits the home run, you go, he, he, he's my hero. Well, Michael Vick. Michael Vick. You know how many people went, hey, you know what, you know, you know, I went and bought a pit bull for the guy. If he brought you to the Super Bowl, yeah, you know, it's the culture. It's where he grew up. Uh, you know, it's what happens. But I can't believe that the Met fans. Everyone thought about killing a dog once. Am I right, Charlie? <laughs> Can you back me here? That's just. Is that your fan voice? That is my, fa my dopey <laughs> fan voice. That guy's got his shirt open and stains on his belly. But then the Met fans giving Reyes a standing ovation when he first he, came to the plate. Well, that, he can, he, yeah, how, about, how about some nice golf applause, okay? Don't need a standing ovation there. No, we loved him. We, he, he brought the first chant back, Dan. He brought the Jose, 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 Jose. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of when I thought. I missed him when he left. I was heartbroken. So... Yeah, I I gotta I I don't want to talk about what he did off the field, but yeah. uh, on the field, I'm like, hey, the guy can hit, literally. He's uh, yeah, he can. Actor, comedian Jim Brewer. By the way, yeah. Now we can talk about if we have no, time. no. Well, I'll get to the deflator in a minute. Yeah. Okay. I want to ask you though, as a former Saturday Night Live cast member, if you were looking at who would be ideal mm. to be in the White House, now based on comedy, not politics, but comedy, Hillary. Or uh, or Donald Trump? Oh God, Trump! Not even close. Not even a. Not even. Not even close. Trump. If Trump gets in, yeah. the comedians and the late night talk shows and SNL are gonna have a field day. He's easy to imitate. He's. Uh, it's just. It's so easy. It's too easy. He's got the mannerisms. He's. He. Trump is easy. It's easy. Get the hair. His hair looks crazy, but no one cares. His face is red. Why is his face red? Like Hillary's not interesting. Hillary's from a, no, from a comedic standpoint. There's not a, you know, she's, where Sarah Palin was. Sarah Palin was great. Yes. I and I killed a bear today, and <laughs> I love shooting things, and I don't know anything about North Korea. They have a great barbecue place. I know that. <laughs> where, where. Trump is a feel. I mean, come on. We're going to build a wall. <laughs> oh, do we, he's a professional wrestler. Do we want to make America great again? <laughs> then take off your shirts and swing them. <laughs> Don't worry about your weight or what you look like. Let's show the world. Take your pants off. We're America. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, that sounded like Jack Nicholson there and a few good men. <laughs> I say I like the guy when he swings his shirt. He says his piece, and anyone that has a yellow hair and a red face has my vote. <laughs> oh, my God. Right, I love him. He's such a fire starter. I don't care about politics. To me, it really is professional wrestling. It's professional wrestling. All right, take a break. Take take a deep breath. Let's take a deep breath. Because I want to come back. You guys are right over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh <-huh. laughs> take your shirt off, I said. <laughs> so uh, we'll get to the deflator. Dude, this was the crazy. This is when I realized how crazy fans are. Okay, like, so this, this is the crazy is, story ever. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna tease this. Yes. We're gonna talk about the guy who deflated the footballs. Allegedly, allegedly, and you meet him in a gym in Mexico. Yes, and and the yes. Okay, all right. It might be a midlife crisis. Who knows? Jim Brewer, actor, comedian, he's killing it now. Jim Brewer and the Loud and Rowdy, performing at the Knitting Knitting Factory in Brooklyn on Monday, July twenty fifth, and Monday, August first at eight Eastern. Songs from the Garage is uh, the album. And we got some festivals too. Big, oh, you do big rock festivals. I like. That. Who's your idol? As far as music? Yeah. Uh, I grew up, I'm a hard rock metal guy. So I grew up in the 80s. So I, I'm ACDC, Metallica. That's like my fine wine right there. Bring me some nice creeping death in some Merlot. <laughs> we'll sit here and relax. I listen to Ride the Lightning. What about comedy? Richard Pryor, Sam Kinison are my, are, uh, are my big, big. Sam Kinison, Richard Pryor, and... Um, uh, George Carlin. Those those were the and today, whenever Chris Rock has to say something, I'm, I I see myself waiting. He he always he never disappoints. Sam Kinison. Kinison. I mean, can you imagine him now? Revolutionist. 
Yeah. I think Revol- he brought the loud yeah. in stand-up comedy. There was there was no one loud until he showed up. He showed up. And do you remember his first broadcast? He was on that Ronnie Dangerfield special. Yeah. And he, shot, he started right off going, stop sending food to the Africans. Yeah. And you're going, oh, oh, no. oh my God, <laughs> what is he saying? Because <laughs> they're sitting there going, don't feed him yet, don't feed him yet. The camera angle wasn't good. And I go, stop sending these people food. We'll send them trucks because they live in a desert. <laughs> we'll get you out of the desert. No food's going to grow here ever. We have foods in America. We don't live in them. Like, oh, my God. Who is this guy? And he did the whole marriage thing. He'd go up to guys like, you married? You married? Yeah. yeah. How long are you married? Two years? Great. Remember this face. Ow! 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 <laughs> because when you think about the delivery in comedy, it was, you know, very, you know. Sort it was of joke. Spit. Yeah, but, but it wasn't. They're, they're, um. Sam was like uh, electrocuting you. Like, he'd shock oh. you. Like, he'd just he, zap you. He was the first... A taser comedian. Uh, Steve Martin was the first, quote, rock star comedian, mm -hmm. selling out big arenas and stuff like that. Sam Kinison was the real rock, like rock and roll star, where he just, he brought in, he brought in the rock crowd. He, he was but a Dice, rock star. Dice Clay was a rock star, too. Correct. He was right there. Yes. Hands down, Dice was a rock star. I mean, he was selling star. out the garden. Oh, God. I went and saw him. I saw him twice. And the second time I saw him, he was playing drums. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> because he could. I'm going to play the drums now. Because I want to. Oh! <laughs> All right. The deflate gate. Yes. The, the deflator. So... It should be mentioned, you have no idea really what's no, going on with the story. Here's story. Just, no, here's the story. And I don't care. Okay. I don't care. Uh, whatever happened, at the end, of, this is my, I, I hate the Patriots. Okay? I hate them. I respect them as a team, but I have to hate them. I just, they're one of the teams. It's just, you hate. Everyone hates a team. I hate the Patriots. Okay. But every year, I'm like, this team, every year, they're at, they're phenomenal. They're my Braves. The, I hate the Braves because they just kill the Mets. So, and to be dead honest with deflate gate, I don't get. Let's say they did deflate the ball. You still got to intercept it. Why did? Why does the offense have a bigger? I, I don't. Get, it's okay. stupid. Okay, get to your story. It's okay. Okay. All right, Dan. You're in second. Mexico. All right, now I'm in Mexico and I'm doing just for laughs festival. There's a new resort, the Riviera, whatever. It's me and through this guy Pete Coriel. He's really funny and some other comics. And the resort is doing big promo. All right, it's like half price for Canadians, and you come there, and we're we're down there, right? So it's raining one day, and I go into the gym, a yeah, big, beautiful gym, two stories, right? It's just me, and I'm in there, and all over TV is the Deflate Gate thing. It was so obnoxious. It's like he, he like he invaded Libya or something. It was so stupid. Well, here's a specialist on it. Well, when you look at Tom Brady's eyes and it flicks to the left, and clearly that's a sign of a liar. I, I think he deflated it. Well, you know, I've been studying football for 40 years. I'm talking about a football. Relax. So um, this guy comes over to me, a big, a pretty big guy, a you know, young guy, and he walks up to me. I, my, I hope my kids die if I'm lying. Comes up to me and he goes, um... What do you uh? What do, what do you think of all this? And I, I'm like, I don't want it, dude. I'm in a gym. I don't want to talk to anyone. Is he gonna start? Is he, I didn't know if he's he's gonna hit on me. Like, what's going on here? Why why are you walking up? Maybe he notices me. Maybe he thinks I'm baked because I look lit up. He's like, how's this guy lifting weights and he's hammered like that? So um, he goes. How much time do I have your seat? I'll hurry uh, it up. Like two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Okay. Long story short, he goes. I'm I'm the deflake eight guy. I went, what? I didn't believe him at first. And he started telling me, he tells me his name. I couldn't even tell you. It's a Polish name. John or whatever, whatever his name is. So just Stremski? Just Stremski. Yes. Jim Stremski. Okay. Yes. Okay. He starts telling me uh, about the Deflategate. All this, uh, and he, he kept saying, Tom's my guy. He's the greatest guy in the world. But I don't know what's going on. Uh, you know, I, I'm not allowed to say anything. The Patriots, like, the, you know, the payment. So what are you doing here? Because uh, I get hate mail and the fans and they, and they want to kill me. And we don't know if we're going to move. This is the only job I've ever had in my whole life. And then his wife comes down from upstairs. And she's 
even more upset. Like you could see the human side. These are just two innocent people. And they're going, we don't know if we're going to have a job. We're not allowed to talk about it. And they keep saying, we're going to take care of you. But they haven't said anything. But we're going to find out more when we get back. And I said, why don't you come to the comedy? You know, we have a comedy show. And he, I gave him my email. And he emailed me back. He's like, sorry, I couldn't come last night. We went to bed early, blah, blah, blah. So I go on Sports Illustrated and say this. I don't know anything. I, I don't know if it's such a big deal. So <laughs> the fans in New England are like, oh, so let me get this straight. <laughs> You're in a gym and you're talking to the flake guy. And he just told you everything. Yeah, bro, sorry your career's in the dumper and you gotta make stories up. <laughs> Why would I wanna make up a story? Did you ask him if he did this? I swear in my life I did not ask him. I was praying he would tell me. And I, I'm not gonna say, I try to lure him in. I'm like, why don't you come on my podcast and we'll <laughs> talk about all this stuff, you know? You need to get us out. But He's, yes, uh, I met him and we talked about it. Jim Brewer, actor, comedian. He's performing at the Knitting Factory in Brooklyn Monday, July 25th and Monday, August 1st. The album, Jim Brewer and the Loud and the Rowdy, Songs from the Garage. Yeah, Great I got two see. videos, Thrash and Old School. Check them out. Good seeing you guys. Bubba Watson Take coming up. Take your shirts off. <laughs> Start swinging them around. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.